Hello everyone at Euroscientist. This is Technoculture. I am Federica Bressan and today I'm here with Harry Fervayen, Executive Director of Europeana Foundation. Harry was my guest on episode number nine of this podcast. It's nice to have you. Uh, Harry. Yes, nice to be here. I was going to say to see you back, but our interview was on Skype, so this is the first time we actually meet in person. Indeed. Europeana offers different types of services, if I may call them that, targeting different types of communities. Mm -hmm. What about the community of professionals of science, researchers, but not only researchers? Mm. What Europeana can offer to them, and also what can they do for Europeana, maybe? Yeah, so people may not notice, but um, so Europeana is an effort to make as much cultural heritage available in usable formats as possible from Europe, about Europe. And um, so we target many different groups. Um, science uh, researchers are a particular and specific one. I'd say that we uh, are already in a specific area of science. Um, we're pretty well known. That would be in the digital humanities uh, science. Uh, European, besides being a service, is also a network, as you know. Uh, and our network is composed of you know, close to 3,000 people. Uh, a large community uh, within that are researchers. So they already, we're already working very intensely with them. So your question was, what kind of services do we have? Uh, we have a large database with 60 million items at the moment um, from all over Europe, books, music, uh, television, text, and so forth, that are mineable, if you want. And um, yeah, I think in, in our last podcast, we already t touched a bit about, uh, on this. I think my big dream is that uh, we can collect, let's call it big data of the past, and that uh, digital humanities researchers, or whatever you want to call them, can mine that and find new patterns that will change the way we think about history and, uh, and perhaps even inform the future. The people in our audience come from very different backgrounds. So maybe someone in the history of art now may be already familiar with the collections, but um, where could they go? And someone, if they're in biology, for example, how should they approach making their first search in Europeana? How do they find where to go? Yeah. Excellent question. Um, we have a, our, our most well-known service is europeana.eu. Uh, that's a website where you can perform a search and uh, many researchers use it that way. I think that's the easiest way into Europeana. Um, we're a platform, so we also make uh, everything available via our APIs. That's a technical interface to, to all the data. And we're connected to research environments, such as the European Open Science Cloud, Daria, Claren. So that is also where people might find the material we make available. And what we need from researchers, I think that was your second question, is uh, all that data is pretty raw. Uh, it comes from the collections from libraries, museums, archives. Uh, these need to be annotated. We need to create semantic uh, layers on top of that so that it becomes understandable, you know, both by machines as well as by humans. Uh, because that's the way that we can create intelligence out of this, out of the very basic data. We normally present Europeana as a go-to place, a collection of data uh, to interrogate, to make searches. There. Um, but European is actually much more. You have different types of activities that bring cultural heritage to people and create new data yeah. through that and new experiences. Can you mention a few? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, we're here at the conference of Europeana, uh, our annual conference. Uh, Every time I, I, I am at these conferences, I, I realize again that the real value of Europeana is not the product. It's the network of people that, that co-create Europeana as it is. Now, that may seem a little bit waffly uh, when I say it like that, but you know, to give you a couple of concrete examples, um, our research community uh, has uh, come up with a number of initiatives that I think in the next year will dramatically improve uh, the services themselves, such as how do we deal with 3D material in Europeana? 
Okay, those are very complex and complicated things. Uh, but I think for researchers of the future, those will be the important things to think about, right? So we, it's basically a co-creation process that will, over the years, improve the service. And you know, that's how the real value is created in the thing. It's not like a commercial company where you know, we, we offer you something and that's it. Um, we just had a, a keynote speaker which I, that I just wanted to mention, uh, Michael Edson. And uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's from the United States. And um, so in his keynote speech, he mentioned something really important. So he said, if we win slow, we lose. And what, what he meant by that is the following. You know, we technological advancements are going so fast at the moment, robotics, artificial intelligence, and so forth. And the crisis that we're facing is increasingly challenging. Climate change, for example, as a, we cannot risk winning slow. And that is really, I think, a call to action to this whole community. I mean, we need those researchers uh, out there in your community to work with us to come to new insights using cultural heritage that might change the world for the better. And if we don't do that quickly and together, you know, I think we're facing some very serious challenges. And I think Michael said at the end, in the next 10, 20 years, nobody will remember the product. They will remember the network that came up with new solutions for the challenges we're facing today. So, Speaking of challenges, of course, climate change is talked about today. And of all things that could come up in a conference like this, it's not the most obvious. Yeah. But it, it, it was interesting the way you brought it up. So you already go paperless like the programs. This is what other conferences have done. Uh, but you went a step further. You looked into the impact of our technology and the infrastructure. Is, is that correct? Yeah, I think there, there, there are two ways to look at the, the climate change in context of Europeana. So the one is on a very practical level. Uh, we're becoming increasingly conscious that uh, even when you talk about digital and digital cultural heritage and, and information, uh, that has a huge carbon footprint. And we did a little research at our office. And uh, of course, everyone, when you think about climate change, you easily think about, uh, okay, all the, all the flights I'm taking all over Europe and all over the world, that has a big carbon footprint, right? Um, and yet, that was a fraction when we made the calculations of the carbon footprint of our digital services. You know, all the energy that it takes to run the servers and so forth is huge. And that made us conscious that we, we should only work with um, service providers who use renewable energy. And then you're dramatically reducing your carbon footprint. So it's like you said, it's much more than no paper. It's, you know, digital has a huge impact. And the good news is that you have these options. These types of providers are there. They're there, but you need to find them. And I think uh, one of the things uh, we should do as a network is say we only want to work with providers who have that uh, and that we can actually trust to do so. To conclude, is there anything that anything new that you would particularly like to mention before I let you go? Yes, there is. Um, we mentioned the website that we have. Uh, we're, we're reinvestigating that website. So uh, I'd like to invite your users and your viewers to go to demo.europeana.eu and there you will see a new version of the website. And, you know, like I said, it's a co-creation space. If your viewers uh, have comments, there's a comment and feedback button. And we'd love to know, you know, how can we make this more useful for researchers and scientists? Tell me one thing that's new in this new website. Yeah. We're using uh, a new um, engine behind um, the search. So the algorithms are completely new. It's a concept called entities. We're working with uh, 
Wikidata in the, in the background. And that is used to make uh, not only searches, but also browsing capabilities more serendipitous. So you might want to, you know, your search starts here and then we'll guide you through some intelligence, new patterns into some other areas. And I think, you know, any good scientist would like to, uh, should like to have that type of user journey through our, uh, through our web services. Thank you for being with us today and I hope to talk to you soon. Me too. It was a great pleasure for the weekend, like always. So good luck with the show. Thank you.